Hello, and welcome to the Vakashina Alien Encounter. Today we are taking a break from the normal topics of cryptids and looking at a strange event revolving around aliens and military cover-ups. This idea was suggested to me from a longtime viewer by the name of Rough Collies, and I thank you for that. In looking over my list of ideas, I see quite a few suggestions for alien slash UFO topics in or around the same area. Due to this, I originally planned on lumping them all together, but quickly realized that the subject of today's video would require more attention on its own, so I probably will be getting to the others at a later time. So with this UFO and alien encounter, I want to give you the full story of what is known, and also I want to take a hard look at what possibly was going on. As a forewarning, I am trying my best with the names that are of Portuguese origin. Starting this off, we have a really curious encounter that sounds really familiar. If I was to say that this story involves a UFO crashing to Earth, alien bodies being found, and the military swiftly coming to the site to confiscate everything, and later giving some preposterous explanations, many if not all of you may assume our story is going to be about Roswell, New Mexico. While all of those descriptions fit, our story is about Brazil. This encounter began in January of 1996 in Vacajina, Brazil. According to the story, during that time frame previously mentioned, UFO sightings suddenly and inexplicably started to pop up in the area. More often than not, these crafts were of the cigar-shaped variety and not the saucer shape. One notable story was a craft was seen over the field of a farm owned by Orlina and Yurdiku de Flitas. Orlina was outside of her house when she heard the sound of her cattle appearing to be startled. This is when she looked up and saw a strange UFO hovering in the air above her livestock. Nothing was reported to have happened other than it stayed in the area for about 40 minutes before shooting off into the sky suddenly. This all culminated when apparently one crashed on the night of January 20th. Three women whose ages ranged between 14 and 22 named Liliani Silva, her sister Valkyria Fashuma Silva, and their friend Gacha Andalaji Chevalier were walking home that night and unknowingly were about to encounter something that would change their lives. According to the girls, they saw a strange humanoid being walking down the road, but it wasn't a human. They described it as being around five feet tall, having three pronounced lobes on its larger than normal head, large oval red eyes, oily brown skin, had a very skinny body, V-shaped feet, and produced a sickening ammonia-like smell. By the way it was walking in a wobbly manner, the girls later mentioned it appeared to be hurt. However, in that instance, they ran away from the being the moment it started to appear to walk towards them. Once arriving home, they told their mother of their encounter, in which she stated the girls had seen the devil. Curiosity got to the better of her, and she went out to investigate for herself. When she arrived, the strong smell of ammonia was still in the air, and the strange V-shaped footprints were found, but the being that left them had vanished without a trace. Later stories emerged that military trucks had been seen in the area, which many believe they captured the creature. Only two days after this, another being that looked exactly like the previous one was found dead alongside the road, and again the body was confiscated by three military vehicles. In March, a zookeeper noticed an odd-looking humanoid, which fit the previous description, hanging around the cages of the animals. Not long after this, three of the animals were found dead from mysterious causes. The locals suddenly noticed a large amount of military personnel in the area, and predominantly had set up a camp near a hospital. In later reports, the staff of the hospital claimed that they were asked to treat two creatures that was only described as having a paranormal nature about them. After treatment, the beings were again taken by the military. Of course, when the military got out, they denied all knowledge of the event. When pressed, no mention was given about the UFO sightings, but the official response was that what the girls saw was a local handicapped man named Luisino, or Little Luis, and on that night he had been covered in mud. As for what the hospital staff reported, the explanation was given that what people assumed was an alien was actually a couple who had dwarfism, which came in for the delivery of their baby. 
I will touch on these explanations later, but I always find it funny when the original response is, we don't know anything about it, but then it changes to, okay, we do know about it, but people just misunderstood what they saw, hoping no one questions why the military needed to be involved in the first place. I should also mention that with this alien encounter, the military mentioned that such beings were called Extraterrestrial Biological Entities, or EBES for short. After this event, many UFO investigators visited the area, including the well-known Dr. Roger Lear, who was famous for being one of the few surgeons who would remove alleged alien implants from people. On his visit, he discovered many of the facts we know about the alien hospital visit. Following his trip, he published a book called UFO Crash in Brazil. The case was also featured on the Fantastico TV show with Reed Globo, and even later became a full article in the Wall Street Journal. Of course, once the story got around, this small town became a hot spot for UFO enthusiasts, and much like Roswell today, the locals started to focus on UFO merchandise to cater to the new visitors. So let's take a moment to look into the claims of this story. Many write it off due to no physical evidence being available, and the stories are hard to verify. As we all know with Roswell, very little physical evidence was left behind outside of the photo of the officer holding up a silver sheet. Even if we are to believe that Roswell was a nuclear test weather balloon from Project Mogul, it still remains that no evidence was left behind. On a side note, I personally don't believe the crash was a balloon of any sort. Being unable to verify the stories is a little odd for me, since from what I understand, the witnesses were known, which is a rarity in many cases. However, many report that those original girls were now charging $200 for an interview. This does bother me to a degree, but since the entire town was making money on the UFO event, the TV show Fantastica was making money off the event, the Wall Street Journal was making money, and even though I personally liked the guy, Dr. Lear was making money, I can't really fault them for not wanting to make money as well. Some may scoff at this, but think about what people say if the question arises about providing hard-clad proof of a Bigfoot. They say anyone who has that evidence would be rich and famous. Now when we are thinking about the official military reports of the story, I have a few issues with them. As previously mentioned, they originally stated they didn't know anything about the event, only later to come out with multiple explanations. Let's start off with a theory about what the being actually was, a handicapped man who was covered in mud. On first appearances, the story somewhat fits, until you look a little closer. First off, if Luis was well known, why would the girls assume the sight of him would be anything out of the normal? This fact they even laughed about later, stating they knew him well and never would have mistaken him for the creature they saw. Secondly, I don't know many people who have oval-shaped red eyes nor V-shaped feet. To add a better description, later reports said the footprints left behind looked like a print from someone making the Vulcan salute minus the thumb extension, but normal foot sized. As for the oddly shaped head, many people can have deformities that cause this to happen. But again, I have to point out that if this man named Luis did have them and was so well known to the locals, why would this description be noteworthy to the girls that night? The pictures I am showing you are of Luis, and he obviously doesn't have head deformities. I am not saying that they couldn't have seen Luisino that night, especially since I have on many occasions noted how cryptids suddenly are given red eyes to make them look more terrifying, but there are quite a few questions about the explanation that don't really seem to fit. The military did offer an explanation to why hospital staff claimed they treated a really odd looking patient that night. Again, I have an issue with the dwarf couple theory. I seriously hope that term doesn't offend any viewers I have that suffer dwarfism. I did look into it and dwarf and little person is said to be acceptable, so if I'm mistaken, then I apologize. I would assume people in the area who have this disorder, known as achondroplasia, aren't too common. Due to this, I would also surmise locals will be familiar with their neighbors who do have it. Many of us are aware that there is no way to hide a secret in a small town. If the people didn't know about them, then the hospital staff surely should be aware of the disorder, and certainly, or should I say hopefully, wouldn't classify it as paranormal in nature. My whole point is, why would this whole event even be seen as anything odd? 
Going with this a step farther, the military did scrap that explanation and provide a totally different one. They claimed on that night they were holding a parade for new inductees to a training school. This explains why so many military vehicles were seen at the time. When it came to the hospital, they said that at the same time as the parade, they had stopped at the hospital to drop off new cardiovascular equipment, and also an ambulance was dropping off a recently exhumed body at the same time. Okay, this theory is plausible. Granted, that is a lot of coincidences to be happening at the same time, but it is very possible to occur. I would remark on the military being the ones to deliver medical equipment, since we have delivery trucks or medical supply companies for that around here, but I can't comment since I don't know how things worked in 1996 Brazil, or at any time for that matter. My problem is, if this was just a military parade, why not just say that at the beginning of the conspiracy theories, rather than an absurd one that was given? Especially when we figure a parade wouldn't be a secret military operation. The other part of this is, wouldn't the parade be known to the locals and provide much fanfare, so there wouldn't be confusion as to why they were showing up suddenly? Granted, in reading about the history of the area, the locals did hold a certain hatred and distrust of the military already. This was said to be due to fear of their abuse of power and the alleged involvement in making political enemies disappear in the past. While this may not seem important, it does paint a good picture of the people's mentality in that time period. With the exhumed body excuse, it is greatly possible that it did happen, but the original story always stated it was two beings that were there, even in the first official report from the military. Again, if this story is accurate, I really wonder why the staff would consider a human corpse paranormal in nature. Seems like the sight of that would be fairly common. At the end of the day, it is really hard to determine what exactly happened on that night in 1996. What we do know is people did see something, UFOs were seen, and some really odd events followed. I provide my thoughts on this encounter not to be an answer as to what happened. I just find things curious and wanted to point them out. As usual with any encounter, be it UFO, paranormal, or even cryptid, you will always find reported sightings from people wanting to ride the coattails of a current hot topic. And this happened here as well, with the final tally of alien bodies being spotted, climbing to seven. Even at one point, two men did an interview claiming to be part of a military organized alien cleanup crew. All of these raise an eyebrow and do hurt the original story, but this is why I normally only focus on the beginning of the reports. For all we know, the military could have been hosting a parade and a body was being delivered to the hospital, but due to current views of mistrust of the military, the locals could assume their presence was for a devious purpose. We may never know what actually happened, but Brazil is a hot spot for UFO activity and there are more reports of UFO slash military conspiracies. As always, we are keeping an open mind to any ideas. Before ending this video, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about two sites that have recently been showing my channel and its content a lot of love. The first is a site called Sasquatch Chronicles, and it is run by Wes Germer. Now, I'm aware that there has been some controversy around Wes, however there are quite a few that still love him. I still wanted to mention that since the start of my Cryptid by State series, his website and social media has been reposting my content. I was completely unaware of this until I started to look at my YouTube analytics and saw a lot of my recent views were coming from a site called SasquatchChronicles.com. At the time, I had no clue why or what the site even was, so I checked it out and found out what I just shared with you. Just so we're clear, I didn't reach out to the site to push my content they just decided to do so. I am fine with this since they don't try to steal the credit from my videos and always refer their viewers to my channel. Moving on, another website that has been showing my channel love is the National Cryptid Society. They originally pushed my video of Cryptid by State Illinois on their social media page and even left a note in the comment section of that video. They really seem to be a good site to visit when looking into cryptid sightings. They even have a place where visitors can report an encounter to them, much like MUFON does. I want to extend a huge thank you to both places mentioned, and I will be including links to their sites in the description. 
I also wanted to mention that I recently set up my store for Teespring, and it should be showing up below my videos. Well, I say should be since I'm assuming YouTube is doing their job. I know a lot of you have been asking for products relating to my channel, and I have been trying to find a place that wasn't going to overcharge you. So in saying that, I want to let you know that Teespring gave me suggested prices, but then allowed me to adjust them. Every single item, to my knowledge, has been reduced greatly from what they wanted to charge you, but it means I make less on the items. For example, the sticker, they wanted to charge you $7, with me getting like a $3 profit. Well, I dropped it to $3, and I make $0.49. Cents. I know many of you may not care, but I just wanted to be open and honest as always. For me, I set up merchandise for you, and the publicity of my channel, and not for me to make a ton of money at it. So the items are there if you want to buy them, and if you don't, then I understand that as well. If the items aren't showing up under the video, please let me know and I'll add links to it in future videos. If you haven't yet done so, do please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this, and I would also greatly appreciate it if you would share my videos with someone you know who may be interested in this type of genre. With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.